Hey, this is Jamie with Stonemeyer Games, and today I'm going to share my favorite mechanisms in Forgotten Waters. Megan and I played through the first scenario of this game. It took about four hours. We played a two-player variant officially provided by the designer on BoardGameGeek, although out of the box, this is a three to seven player game. There's a lot of little things I want to mention here, so I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. Um, and let me start with probably my favorite thing about the game. I absolutely love this book. So this is a book, you can kind of see that each page is different. This is a essentially a glorified campaign log or uh, not really a campaign, kind of a score pad. I mean, it's just a sheet of paper that you're going to write on throughout each game. Um, but each page is different, so you kind of you, you don't go in order. You'll just kind of pull a few random pages out of this book. And then you'll fold them in half to form what looks like a little book. Um, and each one is unique. I, 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 there's so many cool things about this. Um, one is this constellation chart, which is how you gain uh, some, some bonuses throughout the game, how you kind of advance your personal story. Um, and it has just a little, I, I love the, just a little touch of different branching paths and the different design that you're creating. And as you, uh, at certain times, you'll be prompted, um, if you have tokens, constellation tokens to spend, you'll be prompted to advance your own character's story. And that's the heart of what makes this game so good. The story in the book is really good, um, the, the, or the story really, it's through the app, that part is through the app, this, but each character's personal story is also really, really good. It's really well written, um, and it's also tied to the mechanisms in a really satisfying way. Uh, so I just love this book. I love that each page is unique, each story is different. A lot of time and effort and love went into this book, and uh, I, I love it. Uh, one other little mechanical touch that I love down here is that each character has a slightly different chart. You can see, let's see if I can get a few more of them up here. Um, so there's another one that's a little different. Uh, actually, that one's pretty similar. That one's a little different. And on these charts, they show your potential progress in terms of these different six skill categories. And one little clever touch I thought they did was instead of giving you a starting boost in a certain skill, everyone starts out with one skill, um, instead they limit you on certain skills. So uh, you start off all the same, but you might say, okay, my character just isn't ever going to be all that good at brawn because I can only get a maximum of two brawn. So another character might focus on that. So I like that everyone starts off with uh, on even footing in this cooperative game, um, but uh, your potential can determine your path rather than what you what your initial starting boost is. I thought that was really clever. Let me move away from this book for a second, even though that is my favorite component, my favorite mechanisms in the game. Um, I recently mentioned this game on my favorite games that use an app because of the way the, the app uses the, uh, reveals the story to you. It's a very simple to use app. It reads the story to you, which is really nice. And it was really just pleasant to not have to leaf through a, a story book to find the right entry to accidentally read something that you don't want to read yet. The app takes care of that all for you. I thought that was really great. Um, the app uses this book. So there's this ongoing book that you'll use uh, in different situations throughout the game. I won't look through here because I've only played one scenario. I don't want to spoil anything for myself or for you. Um, but one thing I really like about this book that I'll, I just want to mention real quick is I like that for many of the skill tests, um, you gain a skill before you gain this, before you take the skill test. I thought that was just a really nice touch. Like the skill test might say, okay, you're going to go fishing. Before you do, you may permanently gain a, uh, what would be the fishing skill, like the, the hunting skill. So you may permanently gain a hunting skill and then do this, then do the test. So even if you're not great at hunting going into that test, you're going to be a little better even before you take the test, before you initiate the test, which I thought was just a really nice touch. The game is pushing you towards a, a victory or doing well rather than pulling that away from you. I thought that was great. Um... I love the first mate track. This is probably my favorite track in the game. Every every player gets their own little track that they take care of. Every character does. Um, each player. And this is something that we've seen in other games like Rogers of the Ganges. But I really like that there's basically an intersection mechanism here. Uh, so in, in many cooperative games, you might say, okay, when you reach the end of this track, you lose. In this track, there are two tokens that go on this track. There's the number of crew and their discontent. And if those tokens ever intersect, that is a lose condition in the game. I like that because you can really focus on one. Maybe you can push your crew way up. Or maybe you can actually push your crew low um, and have a smaller crew and keep it discontent uh, low as well. You can focus on one or the other, but you kind of have to pay attention to both a little bit. So I really like this mechanism for a cooperative game using that intersect ability rather than just a binary. If you reach this point, you lose. 
That's really clever. The last thing I want to mention about this game, this I thought was a great, um, a great little touch, is that the scenarios in this book, in this game, take around four hours. Uh, but the designers and the publisher did something really clever where they said, four hours is a lot of time for people to sit down and play a game. Why don't we break it up a little bit? Um, and so there's a, there's a stopping point. There's a midway point in every scenario. So I'm told, I know it happened in the first one, where you can just take a break. And the scenario, it, basically, it's, it's kind of a story break, too. Like you, you reach a certain climactic point in, in the scenario where something big happens or you accomplish something. And then it says, okay, you can keep on playing now or you can pack it up for a little bit or just leave it out on the table and come back for part two of this scenario. And I thought that was really clever. It was They were definitely designing with people in mind um, rather than expecting people to just play through a very, very long scenario all in one sitting. I thought that was a really, really clever design touch that I'd love to see in more games that have a longer story to tell, um, but uh, but have, kind of find those times midway through the game, maybe even split it into thirds, find two breaking points, like movies. Movies are always often broken into Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3, um, so that you can kind of break up a longer uh, session into several smaller sessions. So yeah, those are my favorite mechanisms in Forgotten Waters. If these remind you of mechanisms in another game that you really love, or if you've played Forgotten Waters and you have a different favorite mechanism that you'd like to highlight, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Thanks.